we'll be chatting about um, the mental side of goal kicking, um, some challenges that you faced during your career and what it takes uh, to be a goal kicker at the highest level. You finished with uh, the Golden Boot Award in the Premiership. I think it was 200 points, was it, between 22 rounds? What do you reckon contributed to, you know, you amassing those amount of points and being so consistent? Couldn't score any tries. <laughs> um, I'm not too sure. Like we, um, you look, you look at some teams like Exeter. They they don't really go for go for posts. They'll they'll back their driving more. And we we did that a stage or so up last season, but towards towards the back end, then we we sort of we found that if we if we build points, um, it's sort of um, put, put scoreboard pressure on teams, and then they, that's when they started overplaying, and our, and our defense was working well, and we cashed in on the back of that. So if if teams tend to give penalties away when they uh, when they feel under pressure, so if when when we were playing well after lockdown, we I think teams felt a bit pressurized. They gave a lot of penalties away, which gave me opportunities then to to kick the goal, and I played. Obviously, uh, you know you got the golden boot ward last year, Reese. Um, do you think you were in your best form? Best form. I had a period of Bath when um, I think the longest run of kicks I've had is something like 26. Um, I remember at the time we, we played Gloucester in the Premiership Cup, or LB Cup, whatever it was at the time. And Brewey scored a try and he could have gone closer to the post. And <laughs> um, I remember thinking, why, why, why has he done this? I just remember shouting at Brewery, like, "What are you doing? Get near the post." I'm on, like, I didn't say it, but I was on 26 kicks. I didn't want to, I wanted to carry the three. <laughs> so at the time, that's all I could think about was like, "Why hasn't Brewery gone close to the post?" I end up missing that kick, which is like, looking back now is is poor from me. But I found out he broken his arm. So all that's right. Why he, so that's why he put the ball down as soon as he could. So I'm there shouting at him, calling him selfish, getting underneath the post, and he's he's got a broken arm. So I was going to yeah, say he probably did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, he, that's the type of guy he is, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's when I thought, yeah, I'm kicking well here. So when you when you're in that form, like what what does it feel like for you? As in, like, how do you, do you feel like you're never going to miss? Do you feel like everything's just coming off sweet? Uh, it's just simple. You just for me, I, I kick best, and I, I don't over, overcomplicate things. Um, so my, my main triggers are um, just pace into the ball and just try and get through it. Um, and what I found is sort of nine times out of ten, if you do that, the kick will go over. There'll be some occasions where you miss, and I, and I can live with that as long as I've done gone through my process and sort of back what I do do throughout the week. So with that, when has been like your lowest point goal kicking wise? You think um, the lowest point I can remember. I came back. There's two games coming back from injury once. Play against Edinburgh um, for the Scarlets. The back. No, 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 this is for the Scarlets. Um, all my all my low points have been when I was back in <laughs> um, So yeah, there's one. I came back and honestly, these the balls are flying all over the shop and. I just, I just wasn't very comfortable kicking the ball. I hadn't, I hadn't done enough work coming back from an MCL sprain, and I just didn't feel comfortable. And it, like, that was a horrible feeling. There's another one. Then I was playing for Wales, um, first game of the Six Nations, 2012. And I missed my first three kicks against Ireland. Um, hit the post twice, um, and again I'd sprained my MCL two weeks before and did like, one or two sessions before the, the um, before the game, and yeah, I just didn't feel comfortable over the ball and. It's, I, I, missing is now missing is not the main thing for me. It's, it's going through the through my process and trying to get a decent strike on the ball and send it roughly in the right direction. And you know, like if if it misses, so be it. But at the time, it wasn't. I, I didn't. I I didn't really look goal kicking that way. I was always more concerned about what the outcome would be rather than yeah. going, focusing on the process. Do you think that's something that you've developed as you've got older? Yeah. So I found when I was back in Wales there. I used to kick off a low tee and like, I, I, I was never comfortable off it. And I'd have some games where I'd absolutely nail the ball and the balls would be like, you didn't think you're going to miss, but I was never confident of my, of my, I never backed my process and I was never hundred percent confident. Oh, if I do this, it's going to go over. Like sometimes I'd push the ball right. Sometimes I'd push the ball left. I'd jump out the side and, um, 
it's happened by chance actually. I, went, I, I got released by the Welsh squad to go back and play for the Scarlets, and I forgot my kicking tee at the at the Vale. So I went back to train. I was like, oh, I'm going to kick into you to practice. So there was one on the side, a taller one, which is the one I use now. Uh, yeah. the a phrase to climb up. Um, so I just asked him, can I borrow your tee today? So I just put it down and instantly, when I started kicking off that tee, it just felt a lot easier, a lot more comfortable. Um, and it's it pretty much my, my career as a kicker can be split. I reckon is in, is two periods to it. There's a period before I use this new tee and the period after. Um, you know, I've still missed kicks with the with the with the tee I've got now, but yeah, I'm I'm a lot more confident in terms of when I'm stood waiting to take that kick. I know if I stick to this process, I'm I'm comfortable whether it goes over or not. Whereas with, with the other with the lower tee. I honestly, I'd be stood there just so worried about where it's going to go over or not because I had no consistency um, around it. Yeah. Where's the tee? I, I don't know, but I, I feel so much more at ease now when I'm kicking with this new one. Yeah, I'm similar with with the high tee. I use the extendable one. I just feel like it gives me, it looks more inviting for me to kick and I know I can get under it a bit more. It makes me feel a bit more comfortable striking the ball. Yeah, and that's, that's so important, knowing, feeling comfortable when you're about to take a kick. Honestly, I used, I used to stand there and I'd be like petrified of what, what the result was going to be. Like, just worried about, oh my God, if I miss this, then we're like, we're not going to take the lead or we're only two points up if I miss it. And like, it, it would, um, yeah, I'd just be so worried about it. And like, it's a hor- horrible feeling, really. So, and yeah. it's, when you are a goal kick and you feel like that, it's, it's a lonely place to be. It is. It's really interesting because I suffered a few, a few times in my career when my confidence was low. And I was actually dreading taking the kick, but his confidence for me was played a big part of my kicking. It really yeah. did. It, you know, if you are in that form of where you know you're, you're missing and nothing feels right, you don't feel too confident. How have you? How have you got past it? Like, how have you moved on from it in, in the past? Or is there anything that, like any techniques that you'd use? Would you use like visualization, a sports psychologist? You train harder in the week, um, train less. Is there anything that you've like sort of developed over the years? Well, there's one game uh, when I was back to the Scars, I didn't kick well in the LV Cup game. We played Wasps the week after, and I'd gone from missing almost all my kicks to kicking like, very well in the day. Um, I remember they asked me in the interview what, what changed, and what what I found worked really well that week was not <laughs> previous to that. I if I didn't kick well, I'd want to kick more and more and more. And then I'd get more and more frustrated. I'd end up on the training field for hours afterwards. My knee would be so off because I'd be like, right, I've got to kick the next five. You miss one, you go keep going and going and going. And um, the kick, goal kicking is something you can, I think you can overthink quite a bit. Um, so what I remember that week, what worked really well for me was just stripping it back, sort of not trying to overthink too much, just right, speed into the ball, get through the ball and then, um, and sort of not beating myself up, which um, which now is something I'm, I'm a lot better at. Um, if I if I don't kick well, no, sort of nothing changes really for me. Um, I've got a I've got a process I go through now which I'm pretty comfortable with, um, and it takes it takes different people a different amount of time to get that that stage. But I feel like I'm at, at that stage now where if I don't kick well. I'm I I'm usually know almost straight away what's happened, whether yeah. it be like, I was too close to the ball, I've jumped out the side, the ball was too far off my foot, and then it's just like right, try and correct that on the field. Sometimes you, sometimes you just don't kick well. It happens. Like I see half penny, I see Farrell miss miss a few kicks, but it's going to happen to everyone. Um, but now it's I'd have the temptation previously to go right Monday come in do X amount of kicks, Tuesday, do it Thursday, maybe kick my day off. Whereas now it's, I I don't kick on a Monday. I'll do, I try and limit myself to maybe eight kicks um, after a session. So most weeks I'll kick maybe 14 to 16 goal kicks. Um, And what what I've really found is that if if you limit yourself to a certain amount of kicks. You have to put pressure on yourself during the week to, to really focus on those kicks. Whereas before, I'd be like, right, just go back, miss a few, or it doesn't matter, I'll do 10 more, yeah. get more and more worked up. And then the standard quality of the session just, just 
deteriorate. So now I really put pressure on myself to um, lim- limit the amount of kicks. Um, and I remember, well, you know, Bark's new. Um, <laughs> Ollie Bartley had a, had a stint on the Scarlet and um, we were kicking on the on the field. And I was, I had that, my last kick is, is usually from the left-hand touchline. Um, and I missed sort of three or four in the bounce. And he could see that I was just getting more and more worked up myself. Um, he didn't say anything at the time. Then I, I might have kicked one or I, to finish, I can't remember. But he came up to me and said, "You should, I, if I were you, I'd have just done one or two and then left it. And I was like, I can't do that. You, I've got to yeah. finish on a good one. Whereas now I, I'm, I'm at the stage where I'll kick. I'll kick one. If if I miss, I'm, I may take one more. But if I miss that second one, that's it. I'm, I'll park it and move on. Yeah. Um, and when you're not used to doing that, that can be quite tough. Because I used to worry, oh shit, I haven't kicked well this week. And but you know, you, you can turn things around. You, you you have these days where you don't kick well. It's just more about for me. The two main things are speed into the ball and make sure I get through it. And you know, if I, if, I, if I'm not kicking well one day, it's just like I park today wasn't great go think about right what do I do tomorrow next time I kick and then really focus on that and yeah. found that really beneficial not not it's not a case of like as a lot of people will work hard it's not a case of working hard it's a case of backing what you do and sort of working a bit smarter smarter yeah in like games also Reese, if you would have missed like one or two kicks like how, how do you reset yourself for like for the next kick and you get another kick let's say 30 meters out in front of the post um, so I always say, I always think to myself, like, I can't remember many kicks where I've stuck to my process of missed, and especially inside the 15s. Um, yeah, so it's just falling back on that. I was thinking, right, if I if I'm aggressive, not aggressive, but if I if I back myself here, get my weight to the ball, not be because you tend to miss when you're a bit tentative or yeah, you rush things, so just sort of slowing down and really getting through the ball, and you, you sort of look back on previous experiences like so if, if I know right from inside the 15s if I do this then chances are I'm not going to miss I can't remember many occasions where I have missed the only ones I have missed is when I haven't fully committed to the kick so it's just yeah it's sort of backing yourself that way and sort of the game I can think if you truly believe in your process then you, you just got to rely on that I was if you could also give Three pieces of advice for some young aspiring goalkeepers. What would they be? So I look back now and I can't. I, I generally can't believe I kicked how many years with a, with a short tee. Um, and I just the re, I, I, I started kicking with it. And I just didn't change it. But I didn't know any better at the time. So um, just just play around with your run up, your, your angle into the ball, your um, what you think about beforehand. Um, your ball placement, your how you how you want it on a tee, what tee you have. So when you when you when you're figuring it all out, like you've got to play around with different things. Um, so that'd be one of them. Another one would be I see a lot of young kickers now. They 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 will kick and kick and kick like I used to, and think that more is doing more kicks is is better for you. Whereas I think yeah, you, you probably do need to kick a little bit more when you're younger and trying to find out what figure out what works for you. But then it's having the discipline then to to limit the amount of kicks you take in the week or after every after a session. Um, so that would be an important one. And then just the, the consistency around it. Um, you know, I've I've done some some work with with a couple of young, young kids and it's been sort of two or three weeks between sessions. And I said, oh. I've, you know, have you, have you had any sessions in between to work on what, what we worked on? I said, no, we haven't. I said, well, you can't really expect to, to master this this skill if you if you don't practice it. And, you know, don't expect to get to master something if you're not going to put the work in. Lovely. And then one, one, one extra one would be, I see a lot of people now doing, like they'll start with kicks from the halfway or they'll start with kicks from the touchline or do, do angles and... You know, I think doing doing kicks with a real tight angle or trying to hit the post is, is great. If you know what you're trying to do, you're trying to figure out how where your ball um, how your balls fly in and, and really narrow yeah. down target. But you can't just do that because I see, you know, you could you could master that kick, but you're never going to do it in a game. So it's about yeah. then realizing why you're doing that, 
because you think it's important for what you want to achieve from your kicking. But then you have to put yourself in situations around the field where, you know, if you miss a kick from five metres out from the try line, right on the touch line, if you get it over, it's like, it's unbelievable. If you miss, it doesn't really matter. Whereas if you take a kick from on the 50 metre line on the 22, they're the ones that you're expecting to have. And trust me, if you, if you haven't practised throughout the week and you get, the, get to a game, those posts can look awful small. Oh God, yeah. When you're there, so you need to you need to figure out you need to put yourself under pressure where you, you sort of these areas where you expect to, where you do get a lot of kicks around the 22, around the 15, or a little bit wider, and and and, and really get comfortable um, in those positions. Nice. Um, and just one thing I want to touch on, just off the top of my head now. So, how do you deal with like pressure? Do you you know do you, do you, you know, do you embrace it? Because some people I know when I speak to kickers, they're like, they love the pressure of a last minute kick to win the game. And if they miss, it doesn't matter. You know, do you, how, how do you deal with pressure? So for me, it's taking, I, 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 as much as I can, I try and take the post out of the equation. So if, you know, if you've seen me kick, I'll, I'll spend a lot of time lining the ball up because when I when I wasn't kicking well, I was so it consumed me so much whether the ball would go over or not, and the consequences of missing, I get so worried and like it would, it would be sort of crippling. Um, so now I, I take I line the ball up. Everyone line the ball up differently, but I line it up where where I think the seam is pointing towards the middle of the post. And then once that once that ball set now, and I know the posts aren't going to move, so. I can almost take those out of the equation. I'll take my, I get my alignment then off the ball, and I should, I know then if I, if my angle to the approach to the ball is the same angle every time, I get through in a straight line, then chances are the ball's going to go in the general direction of the post. So that I found that that's helped me loads in terms of pressure kicks and 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 what the. If I miss or if I get it over, what what the what the what that means for the game? It's I, I I it's allowed me not to worry about that too much. I can just worry about my process, and if I get that right, like sort of nine times out of ten, the ball is going to go over. So it's a strange right. I just it's allowed me not to worry about the post and whether the ball goes over or not. 